In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Join Apostle John Udo today as he teaches the Word that was with God and is now with us for our transformation. Apostle John Udo, worth hearing. The book of Philippians chapter 2, Philippians chapter 2 verse 13 turn your bibles with me to philippians chapter 2 verse 13 and uh, i'm going to be reading about four different translations of this particular bible verse to help us have better understanding of this text for it is god that walketh in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. It is God that worketh in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Hallelujah. Clearly from this scripture we see that whatever we do whatever we end up doing started from God working in us in order for us to be able to do that thing and of course you and I know that our everyday decisions and actions determines what becomes of us in life it is your the decisions you took yesterday that determined where you are today. And the decisions you are currently taking today, uh, the decisions you will end up acting upon, they will determine what you'll become tomorrow. So the Bible says the things we do for the good pleasure of God, they started by God walking in us. And then we end up doing those things for the good pleasure of God. Now we will look at three other translations in order for us to understand how God actually works in us. To bring us to the place of doing the right things which will lead to pleasure for God. So let's see the HCSB translation. It says... It is God who is working in you, enabling you both to desire and to work out his good purpose. So how does God do this thing in us? He enables us to desire. He works in our minds. He works in our hearts to begin to desire the things he has in mind for us. To begin to think in the direction of his plans for our lives. The Bible says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of good and not of evil, to give you an expected end. So there is a plan of God, there is a thought of God concerning your life. And God wants you to come into it. God wants you to accomplish it. There are things written concerning you in your book. Jesus said, Lo, I come in the volume of book as it is written of me to do thy will, O God. And God wants each and every one of us to fulfill what is written concerning us. So what does God do? God begins to walk in our minds and in our hearts, putting in the information about our destinies in our hearts. He walks in us putting in the desires that align with his purposes for our lives. He puts them in our hearts so that those are the things we are going to end up doing. The good word translation puts it this way. It is God who produces in you the desires and actions that pleases him. It is God who produces in you the desires and the actions that will end up pleasing him. And then the Weymouth translation says, For it is God himself 
whose power creates within you the desire to do his gracious will and also brings about the accomplishment of this desire. So it is God who creates within you. What does he create within you? The desires. And what are those desires? Those desires are his original plans for your life. He begins to bring them in your heart so that you can agree with them and then begin to run with them. And then the question is, why does God bring these things to our heart? Why does God um, lay these things on our heart? It is simply because he wants to upgrade your mind to the knowledge, to the level of those things which he wants you to accomplish in life. He wants to upgrade your thought patterns because before he brought those things to your heart, you were not thinking of those things. You had other thoughts. You had other plans. You had other wishes. You had other desires. But then God wanting to draw your attention into something new. God wanting to take you into something entirely different. He begins to drop fresh information in your heart in order to upgrade you to the dimension of that information and to end up making you begin to act in line with that new dimension. For example, for those that handle uh, um, computer systems and uh, even our phones, my phone, for example, oftentimes will tell me there is a need to upgrade. And so I'll click the upgrade and it will upgrade to a new dimension. And that is to say, without my upgrading to the new dimension, there are things associated with that new dimension that I cannot partake of. No matter how much I desire them, no matter how much I want them, as long as I do not upgrade my phone into those dimensions, my desires will be wasted. My wishes will be wasted. Even my prayers. Can you pray yourself into something that you should upgrade yourself into on your phone? You cannot pray yourself into it. You just have to click the upgrade. You have to upgrade the, the, the system. You have to upgrade your phone in order to enjoy everything associated with that level of operation. It is the same way with God. There are things God wants you to come into. There are dimensions he wants you to assess. There are favors he wants you to begin to walk in. There are realms in the spirit that he wants you to begin to operate in. But your current state of heart and mind cannot accommodate those things. Your current pattern of reasoning cannot assess those things. And so God begins to bring fresh information into your heart. God begins to bring fresh information into your mind. He works in you both to will, both to desire, and then you can end up beginning to do what God has put in your heart. Everything begins in the mind. The good, the bad, the ugly, the great, the mighty, the terrible, everything begins in the mind. If God wants to lift you to another level, he must upgrade your mind to that level. If the devil wants to take you down into a particular level, he must degrade your mind, reduce your mind to that level that he wants to take you into. Job chapter 3 from verse 25 tells us something very interesting about how evil befell the man called Job. Job chapter 3 from verse 25. He says, For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me. And that which I was afraid of is come unto me. Verse 26. I was not in safety. Neither had I rest. 
Neither was I quiet. Yet trouble came. Now, the man Job in the Bible was a very interesting man. He was a very wealthy man, prosperous man, had many children. Everything was okay for Job. But from this scripture, we understand that even though everything looked okay for Job, in the mind of Job, everything was not okay. In his heart, he was afraid that he was going to lose everything. He constantly thought of crisis befalling his children. He constantly somehow believed in his heart that misfortunes will suddenly happen to him and all of his wealth and his empire would be wiped away. And do you know what? Everything he meditated upon and thought about came to pass in his life. In one day, crisis upon crisis befell him. He lost all his cattle, all his donkeys, all his camels. He lost his sons. He lost practically everything. He even lost his health. And here in verse 25 of Job chapter 3, we discover how that happened. He himself said it, that the thing I greatly feared has come upon me. That which I have been afraid of has come unto me. Where does fear happen? Fear happens in the mind. He kept meditating on fear. He kept meditating on his children dying. He kept meditating on, even though he had everything, he meditated himself out of those things he had. Glory be to God. The things that Job feared most became Job's reality. He practically, look at the, the, the latter end of that verse 25. He says, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. So what you are afraid of is what comes to you. Humanly speaking, once you think, since I am afraid of it, I'm going to avoid it, right? Since I am afraid of it, I'm going to escape from it. But in the realms of the spirit, what you are afraid of is what you attract. Job says it here. He says, that which, was I, which I was afraid of has come to me. And that was because he constantly preoccupied his mind with the fear of disaster. Hear me. Never preoccupy your mind with what you don't want to see in your life. I'll say that again. Never preoccupy your mind with what you don't want to see in your life. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 says, For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. It doesn't matter what you are saying with your mouth. What you are thinking in your heart is what becomes of you. If you keep thinking that you will not succeed in that exam, it doesn't matter how many amens you say in church when we pray for those that are to succeed in the examination. You are not going to succeed because your thoughts are focused on failing that particular examination. The enemy will always fill your mind with what he wants to happen in your life. When they, like I said earlier on, when God wants a new dimension to happen in your life, He begins to put information in your heart associated with that new dimension. It's the same thing with the devil. If He wants to take you into a new dimension, He begins to drop information in your heart concerning that negative dimension that He wants to take you to. And so the devil, for example, begins to give somebody negative thoughts. Negative thoughts that you would, you would drop out of school. Negative thoughts that your marriage will end up to be like that of your father. 
And so, your father used to beat your mother. And so, in your mind, as the brother is proposing to you, you are already thinking, this one, he has muscles like this. I hope I'm not the one he's going to use it on. Your mind is already programmed in that order that men beat women. Perhaps your uncle beat his wife, your neighbor beat his wife, your father beat his wife, and your pastor beat his wife. And, uh, and so, in your mind, men beat women. And so, even though this brother is holy and righteous, you're already thinking he's going to beat you. And I'm assuring you, if you think it enough, that righteous man will beat you. Because your thoughts are powerful. And so the devil puts negative thoughts in, it, in your heart. For some people, see, for example, when you find people getting involved in sexual intercourse and all of that, they didn't just wake up and do it. The devil put thoughts of lust in their heart. They began to lust after the sister. They began to lust after the brother. And as they keep meditating on those lustful thoughts, that's why the Bible says, casting down imaginations. Once you begin to have thoughts that are not consistent with the will and plan and purpose of God for your life, once you begin to have thoughts that are not consistent with the goal you are pursuing, what are you to do to those thoughts? Cast them down. If you do not cast them down, those thoughts will cast you down. They will drag you down into whatever they represent. So when you wake up and you just find yourself lost in after somebody's wife, you need to know that the devil is investing negative thoughts in your heart. It was not just that you just noticed that she's beautiful. No. There are demons hovering around you drawing your attention to her. There are devils hovering around you, drawing your attention to him. So you need to learn to cast down those imaginations. Because the devil is trying to drag your mind into that dimension. And whatever you continually meditate upon, you will act upon. Whether good or bad. The devil, for example, will begin to invest thoughts of death in the heart of a person. You start thinking, what if I die? As you are traveling, you are thinking, what if this accident happens and I die? And all of that. And if you continue to meditate on those things and you don't cast them down, you are likely going to lose your life. There is something I call the principle of consent. The principle of consent. God cannot bless you without your consent. And the enemy cannot harm you without your consent. So how do we give consent to either God or the enemy? John 10.10 10 says, The enemy has not come but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. So you see, both of them are coming. God comes. Satan comes. So who is in the center? You are the one right in the center to decide which of them you are to receive. It is your consent that determines whether the abundant life from God comes to you or whether the stealing and the killing and the destruction from Satan gets to you. Are you following me? So how do we give consent to the enemy? You give consent to the enemy by meditating on the suggestions that the enemy puts in your heart. If you meditate on sicknesses, you are giving consent for sickness to take over your body. If you meditate on failure, you are giving consent for failure to become your reality. If you meditate on poverty, you are giving poverty the consent and the permission to become your reality. But if you meditate on good health, on healing and deliverance from the Bible, what you are doing is that you are upgrading your mind. 
to the dimension of good health that belongs to you in the word of God. If you meditate on prosperity, wealth, and riches, kingdom wealth, you are simply upgrading your mind to that dimension. The Bible says in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. So who is it that makes your way prosperous? You. You make your way prosperous. Who is it that makes sure you have good success? You are the one. And how do you do it? You upgrade your mind by meditating on the book of the law, on the word of God. Find the truth associated with what you want to become. And meditate on it till it becomes your reality in your heart. And in no time at all, that truth that you know will set you free from what was holding you bound. And then you will begin to walk in the reality of that truth. The Bible says, and ye shall know the truth. That knowledge is an upgrade. You come into that dimension of truth and then that truth sets you free. Sets you free from sicknesses. Sets you free from spiritual lethargy. Sets you free from financial crisis. Sets you free from foundational curses sets you free from every kind of limitation you watched the drama earlier on what set that young man free was the information that the pastor gave to him the pastor gave him information from the word of God that prayer works whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven whatsoever you lose on earth shall be lost in heaven you shall decree it in and it shall be established unto you. And armed with that fresh information that upgraded his mind, he began to act. He began to pray. And what happened to the enemy? The enemy was defeated. Until your heart is upgraded into the new dimension, you cannot operate in that new dimension. It doesn't matter how much I talk about favor. There are people who will not come into that favor because their minds cannot comprehend favor. They have been so used to struggling for everything they earn in life. And so when we talk about favor, it just flies over their head. They were so used to fighting and struggling and fighting and struggling for everything. And then pastor comes up and says, you're going to get it easily. You won't have to struggle for it. That man will not come into it until he opens his heart and upgrades his heart, his mind to this dimension where good things can happen easily to him. The Bible says in Psalm 84 verse 11, The Lord God is a son and a shield. He will give grace and he will give glory and no good thing will he, up, uh, will he withhold from those that walk uprightly. You know, there are people that think that God withholds things. Their mindset about God is that God is looking out for them to prevent them from getting good things. And so they have to find a way to please God by all means before they can be blessed by God. Listen, the Bible says in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While you were a sinner, you couldn't approach God. He sent his son to come and die for you. How much more now that you are born again? The Bible says, if he did not withhold his son from us, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? So when you upgrade your mind to this dimension that, come on, God freely gives us all things, especially because he has given his son to us. When your mind is upgraded to this dimension, I tell you, it becomes easy for you to receive things from God. Prayer without a transformation, a renewal of the mind is a waste of time. Mark eleven twenty two says from verse 22. It says, have faith in God. For whosoever shall say unto this mountain. That's prayer, right? You are saying, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea. But shall not doubt in his heart. And shall not doubt in his heart. He shall have whatsoever he said. 
So it says, Whosoever shall pray and say to this mountain, Be removed, the mountain of sickness, the mountain of delay, the mountain of poverty, every kind of mountain. Whosoever shall say unto it, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. That means, no matter how loud you pray, if you doubt in your heart, that's where the thoughts are taking place. If you doubt in your heart, you are not going to get anything. In fact, the Bible says, let not that man think that he will receive anything from God. Because that man is unstable in all his ways. He's like the wave of the sea. His mind has not yet comprehended that dimension. His mind has not yet agreed that, look, I can be rich. I can break loose from this poverty in my lineage. He desires it. He wants it. But his mind is still tied down to the previous lifestyle of poverty that he is so used to in his family line. And so if a man wants to change his background, he wants to break loose. If a woman wants to break loose from the previous trend that his mind has been accustomed to, that his heart has been accustomed to, what he or she needs to do is to upgrade his mind. If it is concerning health, upgrade your mind in terms of health. Find truth about health. Study it. Find the truth about healing. Study it and your mind will upgrade. And then you can pray. And then you will have what you say. If it's about finances, about prosperity, you find it in scriptures. Read book about, books about finances. And then you will begin to prosper. If you want to have a peaceful home, for example, your, your family background is full of crises, always quarreling and all of that. Now you are about to get married and you are saying to yourself, I do not want to have the kind of family that my mother had. I do not want to have the kind of family that my father had. What are you going to do? You need to upgrade your mind. Begin to read books about happy homes. Begin to read books about how to treat your wife. Because the reason why you're father's house was the way it was was simply because your father maltreated your mother. Your father shouted at your mother at every turn. He was a commander in the house. He commanded everything. Even God in the house, he commanded God. And so there was always problem in the house. So you're going to need to learn how not to shout at your wife. You know, some men think that shouting at a woman means he is powerful. He had watched his father. The father would stand like this. Come here! And so he's already training as a single. He comes to church and he sees that sister. I say, let me practice. And he says, Sister Sarah, come here! God help you if Sister Sarah is the type that came from a commanding home too. Praise the name of the Lord. And so you are going to need to remove from your mind the way your father treated your mother. And upgrade your mind with the way God wants a man to treat a woman. The Bible says, husband, love your wife. Until you get that upgrade, my brother, you won't love that sister, no matter how beautiful she is. You can love her with the love of the world, but when it comes to the love of the Lord, you will not be able to operate it. So you have to upgrade your mind to the dimension of God when it comes to having a happy home. There are principles. The Bible says, wives, submit to your husband. Husband, treat your wife like weaker vessels. Handle them with care. How many of you grab egg and throw it up and then bounce it and catch it again? You can't catch it again. So if you are going to have a happy home, you are going to have to treat your wife like eggs. I bought eggs the other day, a crate, and then I kept it on the side, on the passenger seat, and I was driving. As I was driving, I remembered that very soon I will carry something and drop on that seat again. And the eggs will break. So I packed the car, I carried it, I put it at the back seat, and then I came back and continued my journey. Why did I do that? The egg is delicate. So if you handle a woman roughly, you are going to have troubles in that home. So you're going to need to upgrade your mind to how to treat women. And I tell you, nobody knows how to treat women well like a man filled with the Holy Ghost. Ah, yeah, yeah. So, sisters, please make sure you marry a man filled with the Holy Ghost. It, it, I should tell them. 
My goodness. Make sure while you are running all the checks to know whether the man is okay to be married. Make sure he's a man that is filled with the Holy Ghost. Make sure he's a man that fears God. Make sure he's a man that loves God. Because if he loves God, he's going to love you. Hallelujah. If he loves God, he's going to love you. And if he fears God and knows God and knows the truth, he's going to prosper. He might not have money right now, but the money is loading. I said the money is loading. The Bible says so mightily grew the word. The word of money is growing inside some brothers here. Stop looking at them anyhow. The word of money is growing inside of them. And very soon that word will prevail. I said very soon that word will prevail. Because they are upgrading their minds every day. So don't look at that sister the way she is right now. There is an upgrade going on inside of her. And so if you can look at her upgrade level, you can go ahead with her. Because in no time at all, what she is meditating upon will become her reality. In no time at all, what he is meditating upon will soon become his reality. Praise the name of the Lord. So before you can truly be blessed and favored by God, you need to upgrade your mind to that dimension of God. Stop thinking like the old. The Bible says, Behold, I do a new thing. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, can't you see it? <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You see, if you keep looking for your space at the back, you are going to find a space that fits you at the back. I promise you that. Start looking for your space at the front. Hallelujah. Start looking for your space among the rich. Start looking for your space among the anointed. Start looking for your space among those who do know their God. And those who do exploits. You know one time some women went to look for Jesus at the grave. And why they were searching for Jesus in Luke chapter 24 at the grave? Verse 4 says, And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid, they bowed down their faces to the earth. They said unto them, Why seek ye for the living among the dead? So, Jesus had died like he promised. But before he died, he told them, I will resurrect. I will rise again on the third day. But somehow their minds couldn't comprehend it. So even after he had resurrected, they went looking for him among the dead. The angel had to appear to them and say, why are you looking for the living among the dead? He has migrated. He has migrated. He has upgraded himself. He has moved from the realm of the dead. To the realm of the living. So like I said earlier on. Even when God has moved in the spirit realm. And moved you in the spirit realm. If you keep looking for your space. In the old dimension. You will find a place to stay there. But Jesus had moved. The women kept looking for him there. But no matter how much they searched. They couldn't find him there. Because he had changed dimensions. I'm seeing somebody here is going to change dimensions. You are going to be relocating from sicknesses to good health. You are going to be relocating from poverty to prosperity. You are going to be relocating from small to big. And from big to bigger. And from bigger to biggest. And from the biggest to the hyper biggest. Hallelujah. It's all about how well you can upgrade yourself to the dimension that you desire to see yourself operating in. Until you can fix your thoughts, you cannot fix your life. Until you can fix your thoughts, you cannot fix your life. Change your thoughts and your lifestyle will begin to change. Stop thinking the way you used to think. 
get fresh information and begin to think like the people you are looking at and desiring to be. Start thinking like them. Get information. Associate with them. Rub minds with them. I told you the story of how I wanted to begin to walk in miracles. I was not a miracle walker. I was not a healer. But then I'll read in books how people work miracles. I'll watch on the television. Miracles, signs and wonders. So what did I do? I began to study the books of those people doing miracles. I'll read their books. Listen to their messages. What was I doing? I was upgrading my mind. To become like them. Nothing happens by chance. You create your life. And so, I remember I studied a book, How to Heal the Sick, by Charles and Francis Hunter. I read that book like five times over. Read it the first time, read it again. I saw miracles, I saw signs and wonders. I kept reading it because I wanted that dimension. I kept loading my mind with the upgrade of the information that I found inside the book. Until suddenly one day, I began to perform the same miracles that I had read in the book. In that book I read of how short hands grew when the man and his wife prayed. How short legs grew. How all manner of diseases disappeared. And as I upgraded my mind to those dimensions, suddenly I began to grow short hands. I began to grow short legs in the name of the Lord. Crooked bones began to straighten up when I prayed for them. Why? I had upgraded my mind to that dimension. I remember when I was um, um, preparing to get married and uh, I had a case I needed to handle in Abuja of a lady that had been, uh, she had an accident and uh, her right leg had become twisted at the feet became twisted and shorter than the left leg. And uh, and it had remained like that for eight years. So she walked with a limp holding uh, a cane. And uh, she heard that I had prayed for her friend. They had both met in the hospital. They had accidents at different points. And then they met in the hospital and became friends with one and a half legs. So her friend was limping and she was limping, limping rather. And so they became friends. They met in the hospital having leg problems. And so they became friends, limping friends, right? And so her friend had come to one of my services. And in that service, I prayed for her friend and the leg grew out. And she became okay. She began to walk well. So she called her friend in Abuja and said, look, I have left that level. I have upgraded I am not limping again. This is the man that prayed for me. And so the other one began to call me. And I told her, okay, I have a program. I'll be coming to Abuja at such and such a time. So when I arrived at Abuja, she came to see me. Her case was worse than that of her friend. Her friend, one, one leg was just shorter. But her own, the leg was twisted at the feet. And so I called the woman, my wife. I said, my wife-to-be, I called her and I said, look, I need to go and pray for somebody. Come on, let's come and see how miracles work. And uh, so I took her along with me. By the way, I just wanted to make sure I secure her by miracles. Because one guy was uh, toasting her after I had proposed to her. So I, I just needed to perform one miracle that will secure her permanently. Brothers, all this coke you are buying for them does not work. Just perform a miracle. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And so I, I said, come along, let's, let's go and pray for somebody. And then I took her there, and the lady came. Everybody could see she was limping, and the leg was twisted like this. And I bent over, took the leg in my hand, and as I said, thank you, Jesus. My wife was watching, about three other people were watching. The leg straightened out in my hand and grew out. Right there, it was such an amazing miracle. I didn't even pray. I just said, thank you, Jesus. Before I could pray, the leg straightened out. And when she saw it, she was permanently my wife. You understand what I'm talking about? Nobody could convince her again. 
Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And, and so I had upgraded my mind to the level of being able to work miracles. And so when I saw that, I knew it was going to happen. Have you ever been in a, in a situation where you just know it must work? Your mind has been upgraded to the fact that this thing, people are saying it will not work. You say, no, it will work. Their minds have not been upgraded. Your own has been upgraded. So you think differently. You see differently. They tell you, stop, it won't work. You say, no, this one, it must work. It's because your mind has been upgraded to that dimension where things must just work. Hallelujah. As a Christian, you are not really going to prosper and be successful if you don't upgrade your mind in the dimensions of the grace of God. Moses came with the law. But Jesus, the Bible says when Jesus came, what did he come with? He came with grace and truth. So if you stick to the law, you're going to have a lot of problems. You need to upgrade your mind. When you become born again, you need to upgrade your mind into the truth that has to do with the grace of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9 says, For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you might become rich. Hallelujah. If you don't upgrade your mind to that truth that grace can make you rich. Even though you are a Christian, you will be a poor Christian. And there will still be space for you in heaven. Because poor men go to heaven. And rich men go to heaven. What allows us to enter heaven is our encounter with Christ. Salvation. So whether you are rich or poor, sick or healthy, we will all meet in heaven. Praise the name of the Lord. So I will rather have the good things of life in Christ here and then cross over to heaven. I mean, I observe that in paradise, even Lazarus, the poor man, had to stay at the bosom of the rich man, Abraham, when they got to the paradise. So some, there's something about getting it right here on earth. You will get it right in heaven also. Abraham got it right and in heaven, every other person stayed at his bosom. Glory be to God. So I need for you to gain the right knowledge about the grace of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8 says, For God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things might abound unto every good work. That is to say, God wants you to operate in good works at all times. But then there is a grace that makes it happen. And the Bible says God is able to make that grace available to you. But can your mind comprehend that grace? Can your mind believe that you can have all grace for all sufficiency in all things. So that you might abound unto every good work. Like I read in Philippians at the beginning of the meeting. It is God that works in you. To desire, he begins to make you to desire this dimension of his grace that can make all things to work together for good for you. That is simply because as a man thinketh, so he is. If he upgrades his mind in terms of spiritual things, you will see him operating those spiritual things. If he upgrades his mind in terms of finances, you will see him operating in that level of financial blessings. Whatever you upgrade your mind to, you will begin to experience in your life. The Bible tells us in Mark chapter 3 from verse 14 that Jesus Christ ordained 12 that they should be with him. Mark 3 from verse 14. That they should be with him And that he might send them forth to preach. And to have power to heal sicknesses. And to cast out devils. If you take note of verse 14, it says, He ordained them, it says, He ordained them to be with him first. Before he will send them forth. Why does he want them to be with him? He want them to begin to see a new dimension like he is operating. He wanted them to see him working miracles so that they can desire to work miracles 
and then they can upgrade their minds to the miraculous dimensions. He wanted them to see him healing the sick so that they can, you see, what you expose yourself to is what you become. If you expose yourself to miracle signs and wonders, you will begin to walk in miracle signs and wonders. That's why people in this church walk miracles easily. Because they expose themselves to the miracles in the atmosphere. That's why people in this church prosper. You cannot be in this church and remain a poor man. Except you come to church with the key of your heart. You lock it before you enter. And then after the service you open your heart again. And the, the truth here is not entering into your heart. Because if you truly know the truth about prosperity, about good health, about every other good thing, you will begin to manifest every one of those good things. You know, the disciples were with Jesus so much that after a while, Jesus released them to go and do the same thing. And one time, in uh, Acts chapter 4 verse 13, when the disciples were arrested, in Acts chapter 4, they performed uh, some miracles and they took note of them. They even arrested them. The Bible says, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, verse 13, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. They knew them that they were ignorant men. They knew them that they were unlearned men. They were nobodies. But then when they saw their boldness, when they saw their operating miracles, they said this thing didn't happen by chance. These men have been with Jesus. They have associated with Jesus and their minds have been upgraded to operate like Jesus. And so now they operate like Jesus and everybody could see it that something had happened to these men. So you can be unlearned. You can be ignorant. You can be an illiterate. But the question is, who are you associating with? If you keep associating with ignorant people, you will remain ignorant. If you keep associating with the unlearned, you will remain unlearned. But if you begin to associate with the body of Christ, with a place like this where truth is being taught, it's just a matter of time. You will be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then you will be able to prove that which is the perfect will of God for your life. Praise the name of the Lord. David one time in his life had a set of people come to him in 1 Samuel chapter 22 from verse 1. The Bible says David departed thence and escaped to the cave Adulam. Adulam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. Now look at the men that gathered to David. Everyone that was in distress. David needed men that will help him. Men that will help him to become king. And uh, he was about to raise a mighty army. Let's look at the men that came to him. Everyone that was in distress came to him. Everyone that was indebted came to him. Everyone that was discontented came to him. All of them gathered themselves to him. And he became captain over them. And the Bible says there were about 400 of them. And so when David says, I have my people, I am captain over them. And when you ask him, what are the kind of people you have? He said, this one is owing 5 million naira. The other one is distressed. The other one has crisis. The other one narrowly escaped. They almost killed him. The other one is a failure. The other, those were the kind of men that David had. But after a while, somebody say after a while, the Bible began to describe those same men that gathered around David after their minds had been upgraded. Now let me show you them in Second Samuel chapter 23 from verse 8. These be the names of the mighty men whom David had. Hallelujah. The Tachmonite that sat in the seat, chief among the captains. The same was Adino the Esnite. He lifted up his spear against 800 men whom he slew at one time. 
Hallelujah. A man that was distressed, David upgraded his mind and trained him. And he will lift up his sword and 800 men will fall down dead. And the next one is Eleazar, the son of Dodo, the Ahohite. One of the three mighty men with David. When he defied the Philistines that were gathered together to battle. With the men of, the men of Israel were gone away. He arose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary. And his hand clave unto the sword. And the Lord wrought a great victory that day. And the people returned after him only to the spoil. Such a mighty man. He was a nobody. But when he came to David and was trained and his mind was upgraded. In a battle, all the other Israelites ran away. Because they were overpowered. This man said, I am not running. My mind has been upgraded. I can handle what I could not handle before. I used to run before, but something has shifted inside me. I have come into a new dimension. And he stayed there and fought. He killed all the enemies. By the time the other Israelites came back with reinforcements, there was nobody to kill. This man had killed all of them. The Bible says he fought until his sword claimed to his hand. He was not the one holding the sword again. The sword was holding his hand. What a dimension. And there is yet another one. The Bible says in verse 11, After him was Shammah, the son of Agi, the Hararite. The Philistines were gathered together into a troop where was a piece of ground full of lentils. And the people fled before the Philistines. Okay, that's the one I read earlier on. Verse 13 says, And, okay, verse 12, But he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it, and slew the Philistines, and the Lord wrought a great victory. Verse 13, And three of the thirty chiefs went down and came to David in the harvest time, unto the cave of Adullam. And the troop of the Philistines pitched in the valley of Rephaim. And David was then in a hold, and the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. And David longed and said, Oh, that one would give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is in the, by the gate. And the three mighty men break through the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, David could not drink thereof, but he poured it out unto the Lord. And he said, Be it far from me, O Lord, that I should do this. Is, it not, is this not the blood of the men that went in jeopardy of their lives? Glory to God. The Bible says three of them came to David. And David was just wishing that he could drink water from the well of Bethlehem. By this time, the Philistines had taken over Bethlehem. They were in charge of Bethlehem. And because these three men had David saying that he wished he could drink water. If somebody could get him water from the well of Bethlehem to drink. The men left on their own. And they fought their way into Bethlehem. I mean, the enemies are in charge of Bethlehem. All the army, they are there in Bethlehem. Yet these three men, mighty men, they fought their way into Bethlehem. And when they entered the camp of the enemies, three men only. Remember, they were distressed men when they came. They were indebted. They were failures when they came. But their minds upgraded and they became mighty men of war who were fearless. They fought into the camp of the enemy. I believe the enemies were wondering, what are these men looking for? Fighting into our camp. Do they want to die? And then they noticed they only went to fetch water. I believe one was fetching, two were fighting. Defending the one that was fetching. And after fetching the water, they climbed their horses and fought their way out. I believe at some point, the enemies must have stopped. They just moved away that these ones that came to fetch water in this place. Let's just leave them alone because this is not normal. And they took the water to David. And David himself could not drink it. He said, "This one, if I drink it, it's the blood of these men I'm drinking. And he poured it before the Lord. Listen to me. It doesn't matter the state of your life currently. If you can upgrade your mind, you can become a mighty man. If you can upgrade your mind, you can become a prosperous woman. If you can upgrade your mind, you can become a spiritual giant. There is nothing that you cannot become in life. If only you will upgrade your mind in relation to that thing that you want to become. 
Rise upon your feet this morning. I want you to tell yourself, I'm upgrading my mind. Enough is enough. I cannot continue like this. Something must change. I am ready to pay the price. I am ready to get the right information. I am ready to have my mind renewed so that my life can be transformed. I want you to begin to pray. Begin to pray right now. I am tired of continuing like this. I am tired of remaining at this level. It is time for upgrade. It is time for transformation. It is time to prosper. It is time to fulfill my ministry. It is time to become the great man that God has promised me that I will be. It is time to get married. It is time to be established in greatness. It is time to fulfill the purpose of God for my life. I choose to be transformed by the renewing of my mind. I choose to meditate on the word of God until my mind is upgraded to be a miracle worker, to be a science and wonders worker. I choose to upgrade my mind by the teaching of the word of God, by the truth that I hear and know until I can become the man, until I can become the woman that God has ordained me to be. There is more to life than you are operating right now. There is more to life than what you are doing right now. You are made in the image of God. After the likeness of God, you are not a nobody. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. There is something wonderful about you. Don't worry about how you've been so far. God is doing a new thing. The Bible says, Behold, I do a new thing and it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? For I will make a way in the wilderness and I will make rivers in the desert. Come on, somebody. Can you see what God is doing? Can you lift up your eyes and see the plan of God for your life? God had to bring Abraham out one time and said to him, lift up your eyes and look as far as you can see, as far as you can see, as much as you can see. I want you to begin to look with the perspective of God. I want you to begin to think with the mind of God. As far as you can think, as far as you can see, as far as you can view to the north, to the east, to the west, to the south. Something is changing about somebody here. I just want to give you some time to begin to change your mind, to begin to upgrade in the order that God wants you to upgrade. Enough is enough. I cannot continue like this. Enough is enough. I have a glorious destiny before me. Enough is enough. I choose to enter into the plan of God for my life. I choose to enlarge. I choose to expand. I choose to prosper. I choose to live. I shall not die. I live to the blood of works of the Lord. I choose to be a righteous man. I choose to
They want to get your permission to make you poor by showing you the dream of your being in rags. But when you wake up, you say, I know the thoughts that God thinks towards me. The thought of peace and not of evil to give me an expected end. You begin to declare, I know the grace of my Lord Jesus Christ. Who told he was rich, yet for my sake he became poor, so that I might become rich. You delete what they showed you in the dream. And you activate and upgrade to what God has shown you in his word. And then you begin begin to encounter the dimension that God has prepared for you. I want you to begin to declare that I give permission to God. I give consent to God concerning this matter. Concerning that matter. Lord, I give you consent to make me prosperous. I give you consent to make me a miracle worker. I give you consent to make me a distributor for this company. I give you consent to make me a married woman. I give you consent to make me a pioneer. have been blessed by this ministration follow apostle john udo on facebook at apostle john udo to follow on youtube type john udo ministries if you need prayer counseling deliverance or follow-up call plus two three four eight zero six zero three six one four two one plus two three four eight zero six zero three six one four two one and remember, all things are possible.